Okay, today we're going to be talking about specific heat, also known as specific heat capacity. And so um, let's let's jump right into it and talk about a, um, a definition of specific heat. So here's specific heat's definition. It's going to be the amount of heat that's required to increase the temperature of a substance. Um, that's one gram of that substance, and we're going to increase that substance by one degree Celsius. Now, different substances have different heat, specific heat capacities or specific heats. Um, it varies from substance to substance. Um, and one of the substances on this table here that has one of the highest specific heats is water, 4.18. Now, what that means is it takes a lot of energy to heat up water, and it heats up slowly, and it gives off energy very slowly as it cools down. That's what specific, a high specific heat means. Um, compare that to something like aluminum, and aluminum is not on this, um, on this table, but um, aluminum has a specific heat capacity, some solid aluminum, of about 0.9 um, joules over grams times degrees Celsius, which is the units for specific heat, meaning if we compare aluminum to water, um, aluminum will heat up a lot faster and aluminum will cool down a lot faster um, than water will, which was makes it such a good uh, a good uh, thing to put sodas in and things like that, energy drinks and aluminum cans, they heat up and cool down pretty quickly. Now, we're also going to get into um, calculations involving specific heat. Um, and so there's a formula that we use, and this is the formula given Q equals M times C times delta T is our formula. So let's talk about what each one of these values um, or each one of these variables represent and then we'll talk about how to do problems. So we talked about earlier Q means heat and the heat is typically given in a unit called joules and we talked about heat before. We can also measure heat in kilojoules and kilocalories and calories as well but we'll, for the most part we're going we're gonna to deal with it in joules. So that is our Q value. M is going to be mass of whatever substance we're talking about. Um, and we're going to measure the mass in grams, although sometimes it's measured in kilograms, but mostly in grams. The capital C that we're giving there, that is the specific heat. And that is what we just talked about a few seconds ago. Um, it's the amount of energy it takes to raise the temperature of one uh, gram by one degree Celsius. And the units going to be giving for that one are going to be joules divided by grams multiplied by degree Celsius. The last one that we have here is delta T. Now the symbol delta means change and T means temperature. So this is going to be our change in temperature. And typically um, with delta T values they'll give us two temperatures. They'll say maybe we're, he we're heating from 25 degrees Celsius up to 50 degrees Celsius. So it's really easy to find the change. You just subtract the two and it's always a positive value even if you're cooling. So the change, the delta T would be equal to 25 degrees Celsius, the, ch the difference between the two. The same goes if you're cooling. If you're, if you're at 100 degrees Celsius and you're cooling to, let's say, 75 degrees Celsius, again, we just subtract the two and we get 25 degrees Celsius as our delta T value. Okay? Let's scroll down here and let's, let's identify a problem or work a problem here real quickly here. Okay, so in this example we have um, Calculate the heat needed to heat water from 10 degrees to 50 degrees Celsius. The mass of the water is 100 grams, and the specific heat of water is 4.18. So what we're going to do is write down our formula first, which is Q equals MC delta T. And we're going to identify some of the things here. So we have calculate the heat needed to heat water from 50, from 10 to 50. OK, so here is our delta T value. 10 to 50, and we're just going to subtract the two to get our delta T. So um, we subtract 10 from 50, and we get 40 degrees Celsius. Again, um, it's always a positive value. So 40 degrees Celsius. Mass of the water is 100 grams. So there is our mass. And it tells us the specific heat of water is 4.18. That is our C. So all we have to do is plug these values into our equation. So we're going to say Q is equal to 100 grams, which is our mass, multiplied by uh, specific heat of water, which is 4.18 joules divided by grams times degrees Celsius, multiplied by our temperature change, which we said before was 40 degrees Celsius, 40 degrees Celsius, and then we're going to cancel some units. Grams is on the top and bottom, grams is a numerator and a denominator, and so our answer is going to be left in joules. And so let's run this through our calculator really quickly and see what we get. So we have a 100 multiplied by 4.18 multiplied by 40. And come up.
out with a relatively large number, um, 16,720. And I'm just going to round this guy off to, um, to sig figs, and we'll go 2 sig figs 1.7 times 10, we'll call it to the fourth joules. And that is a measure of heat. Um, so pretty straightforward problem. Let's look at a little curveball that they can throw us here on the next problem. Okay, so what we're being asked to do is they're saying what mass of copper, copper has a specific heat of um, 0.386, will absorb 1,000 joules of heat while heating from uh, 10 degrees Celsius to 15 degrees Celsius. So again, let's, let's use our formula Q equals MC delta T, and let's identify some of our variables here. And so first off it says what mass of copper will specific heat, so they're giving us a specific heat here, there's specific heat, there's our C value, um, and it will absorb a thousand joules of heat. Okay, so they're giving us Q here, that's Q, thousand joules of heat, and then it's heating from 10 degrees Celsius to 15 degrees Celsius, so this is our delta T value. So um, what we're doing is we're being asked to solve for mass. So what I like to do is I like to take my equation and solve it for mass first. And so mass, we need to get mass as the numerator and on the same side. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide both sides by C delta T, C delta T, to rearrange this to solve for mass. What's going to happen is the C delta T is going to cancel on, both, on this side, and we're left with a formula of mass is equal to heat over specific heat times change in temperature. Okay, so now we can just go ahead and plug our values in. So mass is equal to heat, which we look back up there, heat was a thousand joules, so we're going to say a thousand joules on top, divided by the specific heat, 0 0.386 joules over grams times degrees Celsius, multiplied by um, our temperature change, which we just subtract 5 degrees Celsius, just like that. Now, because we have two values as um, denominators, we're going to want to put those guys in parentheses. And so I'm going to punch this through my calculator. I get 1,000 divided by parentheses, 0.386 multiplied by 5. And so I'm going to come up with a mass is equal to 518. Now, just to cancel some units, joules, joules cancels, degrees Celsius, degrees Celsius, so we're left with a unit of grams, and that is the unit of mass. And so that's how we calculate um, specific heat problems. We're always going to be given three of the four variables. Um, we just have to solve for the fourth.